My name is Melissa Nelson. I work in Birmingham, Alabama at the Jefferson County Department of Health as a disease intervention specialist. Gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted infection. It's caused by a bacteria, but it is treatable. And our role as disease intervention specialists is basically to um, investigate cases of sexually transmitted infections, um, figure out where they came from, and stop them from being spread from person to person. A lot of times, people will affectionately call us sex detectives. We do live in a part of the country that has high rates of STIs, gonorrhea being one of the main causes of STIs in the area. Um, there were 11,000 reported cases of gonorrhea in Alabama um, last year, and that means that Alabama was the fifth highest case rate in the country. When you look around the state, there are certain areas that are more impacted, and it tends to be the urban areas where more people live. So Birmingham is one of the areas in the state that have particularly high um, levels of gonorrhea. The majority of the time when I interview a patient who tests positive for gonorrhea, it may be a young adolescent who just feels like they're invincible. And so when I have a young person who has that mindset, I always talk to them about what would you do if we started to see a drug resistant strain of gonorrhea here in Birmingham, Alabama? Because it is existent. Um, it's not necessarily here in the United States but it does exist in other places in the world. And they get scared for a moment. I don't know what I would do. I think I would cry. Today, our last remaining drug to reliably treat gonorrhea is ceftriaxone, a drug which has been available and useful for us to treat gonorrhea for nearly 40 years. But even during that period of time, the amount of drug that we've had to use has increased two or even threefold, and more importantly, we're beginning to recognize occasional cases uh, in which uh, the organism is truly resistant to the effects of ceftriaxone. An ideal new drug for treating gonorrhea is a drug that could be taken by mouth and would be highly effective as a single dose. We're privileged to be playing a role in the development of zolofladacin, a new antibiotic for treatment of gonorrhea. The purpose of this trial is to study a new gonorrhea treatment. Um, we need new therapies for this um, organism that's becoming more resistant to drugs. Um, so we will be looking in a phase three study at the role of this single dose oral zolofladacin compared to the standard of care for men and women with uncomplicated urogenital gonorrhea or gonorrhea of the um, genital tract. Zolofladacin is being developed through a partnership between Intasis and GARD-P. Intasis is the developer of this new antibiotic and they've reached an agreement with GARD-P who will be overseeing the clinical trial. One of the great things about this partnership uh, is that the partners have agreed that Zolofladacin will become available and dedicated to the treatment of gonorrhea, something that should slow the development of resistance by gonorrhea to the drug and also should make it more widely available across the globe. We all have links in the community. So we are, we are community workers in a sense. We do a lot of education and awareness and we build a lot of great relationships with people, whether it be at churches, whether it be at mosques. People know us and they trust us. As a disease intervention specialist, my goal, my overall hope is that one day there will be no need for a disease intervention specialist because the infections have been eradicated. The fact that one day disease intervention specialists will not have to track down um, partners of someone who tested positive for an STI um, to get them tested and to treat it only because there are no more sexually transmitted.